Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, my name is Guus Liepen. Uh, I'm a Debian developer. Um, and I'm talking about uh, multimedia assets that are licensed uh, under the uh, GNU General Public License. Uh, and why am I giving this talk today? Uh, well, um, uh, as a Debian developer, I package uh, some software, including a few games. And there were two games called uh, Blob Wars and Starfighter uh, that I uh, packaged for Debian. Uh, and all was well for some time. And then suddenly someone found out, hey, this game, uh, it's in the Debian main repository, so it should be all uh, free and open source uh, and so on. Uh, but there's uh, some uh, music and images that are being used in the game, and they are actually not free. Um, and then you can talk about, oh, what is uh, free and not free? Well, the, it was so bad that there, were some, uh, there was some music, for example, that explicitly had a copyright header that said, all rights reserved, nothing. So you didn't have any license to spread around the music, for example. That's a big problem if you have this in a distribution because you are spreading it around, so you're liable then. Um, so uh, I started walking uh, together with my wife to replace music and sound for these games uh, from uh, free sources. Uh, and nowadays you can get many Creative Commons licensed uh, multimedia uh, from uh, like opengamearts.org. It's a nice website. Um, but uh, the game engines are usually written, uh, well, they are licensed under the GPL. It's very common. So I thought, why not use the GPL for the multimedia as well? So um, in my outline of the talk, I will talk a little bit about the GPL itself. Uh, and then what, what do we have to think about when you GPL multimedia? I will give you an example of some uh, GPL music. Um, and then we'll give some conclusions. But first, I will tell you uh, why do we want to use the GPL? Uh, as a license. It's very nice because uh, it ensures uh, first that everybody can spread around your work uh, and they, they can use it freely. Uh, it's a very basic thing. Uh, second of all, everybody is allowed to uh, make changes and redistribute them so they can fix bugs, they can add features, um, they can help out in other ways and, and spread out their results. Uh, but uh, what is also very nice is that um, uh, the GPL uh, enforces people who do this to, uh, per, uh, to distribute their change sources under the same license. So uh, it's not that these uh, nice properties, the, the first two, are taken away. Um, so there are other licenses, for example, a BC license, uh, maybe even Creative Commons uh, by license. Uh, um, that uh, allow you to take a work, modify it, uh, and then give the result of that, but not give the original sources back to the community. Um, and the reason why we have these properties is, well, what I already said, is that the source code must be made available. Okay, now you think, okay, source code, what is source code? I know source code for programs, but... Uh, Let's just have a look at the GPL license, and I've taken two small pieces out of it. Uh, the first is the definition of what is source code. So if you have a work, then the source code is the preferred form of the work for making modifications to it. Uh, so uh, if I'm uh, making an image uh, and I have, uh, I do it in Inkscape, for example, I have uh, some vector graphics program, then uh, as the, the designer of, some of the image, the, the, the vector graphics is the source code. Whereas the object code, uh, or any non-source source form of the work, is any result you create from this. For example, if you export your vector graphics as a bitmap image, then that is uh, a non-source form of the work. And later it says that um, you also have corresponding source code for work, uh, meaning everything that you need to generate, install, run, uh, modify uh, the things that you do. Um, because uh, if, for example, you make an image, uh, you have some vector graphics image, SVG, but if uh, Inkscape itself would not be uh, free software, 
then um, it's certainly very difficult for, for me to pass this to someone else and have them have the ability to change your vector graphics. So everything you need uh, to go from source code to end result uh, should be uh, free as well and preferably have the source code available for that. So, okay, now we have this definition of uh, source code from a GPL. Uh, how can we apply this to multimedia? So it's actually very easy. You just have to make the preferred form of modification available. You have to ensure that the final, final project uh, product can be made with uh, free and open source products. Um, so you have to include all the scripts and tools that you use to make the final products. So uh, that's it. Easy, right? Well, then you start thinking and um, wow, you think, uh, well, uh, let's say uh, I have uh, an image I took with my camera from some scene outside. What is the source of that? Is that the scene outside? Well, no, no, no. We, uh, we are only concerned with the digital world. So once you take the image, the, the image file that your camera produces uh, is the source. Uh, the same thing with uh, music, for example. If you make a recording of a live band and you get permission from them to redistribute your work under uh, the GPL, for example, then the recording is the source and not the band themselves. We also don't require uh, perfect fidelity. Uh, if you think, oh, I have the source code, it must be the, the originals, then you think, well, if I take an image with my camera, uh, should it be the RAWs or the G JPEGs? Uh, if you have music, should it be uh, the original WAV files or maybe the flat compressed, uh, lossless compressed uh, sound? Or can I just distribute an org Forbes file? Well, we don't really care that much, as long as uh, you can still modify it in a very easy way. Um, we also don't require the whole history. Um, think uh, if you... Um, you take uh, some GPL uh, work from someone else, like uh, they, they, they made a movie, for example, and you just want one frame from this movie uh, because you want to use this as the backdrop for your game, for example. Do you have to include the whole movie as the source code for your game? No. It's, uh, it's fine to take an excerpt of a larger work. Uh, you don't have to have the whole uh, undo history, for example, of some file, um, because then it would quickly be become unreasonable. So use common sense. Uh, in doubt you can look at how we do it for uh, source code of uh, programs because we have so much experience with that. Uh, and then some things that you should not do. Uh, oh wait, uh, where is that one? Uh, ah, sorry, uh, sorry, uh, first some examples. <laughs> Um, of source code. So for images, if you have uh, vector art, then for example the SVG files uh, can be the, the source files. If you have uh, pixel art, then uh, try, if you use the GIMP for example, you have the native GIMP uh, file format, XCF, which uh, preserves all the layers that you have and, and things like that. Uh, if you have uh, computer rendered art, then uh, for example you, if you make it in Blender or Prophray, then use all the the source files for these programs. Uh, if you have photographs, then of course it's preferable if you have the raw files because you can do much more with them. Uh, if this is the preferred way of working with it as you as an artist, then uh, yes, this is definitely the source. Uh, otherwise, uh, I mean there are cameras for example that cannot produce raw files and the original JPEGs are fine as well. For sound and music, um, well, if you have, for example, uh, a, a band that is uh, playing a number, then you have different microphones and so on, you do a multi-track recording, then you would say, okay, it's uh, maybe all the original tracks, that is the source, because that is what you then uh, work on, you mix everything together, you cut things and so on. But nowadays a lot of music is made uh, on computers, uh, so you have software synthesizers, you have sample libraries and so on. So uh, this is what is the source. Um, if you uh, have a full uh, digital Linux audio workstation set up, uh, there are some files that describe how all your components are linked together and how they produce sound. Uh, this is what is what should be included uh, as source code. But 
and then you think, okay, uh, for example, you said uh, I have a multi-track audio recording. Well, this can easily be uh, many gigabytes of data. If you have a movie, this is even more. Um, so sometimes uh, you think, oh, this is too big to distribute. Um, or sometimes it will take a very long time to, for example, render a movie. Uh, that's, this will take uh, months on a computer cluster, for example. Then try to find some reasonable solutions to, to solve this problem. Uh, one of them, for example, is that you can make use of the written offer clause of the GPL that says, oh, you don't have to really always make the source available online, but you can also make an offer available for someone to uh, get the source from you uh, for a reasonable cost. So uh, if you have uh, gigabytes of data, then you can say, okay, I can give you a CD via the uh, post, office, uh, post uh, system, for example. Um, maybe if it's uh, computationally demanding, you can point them to uh, the company or institute where you rendered the stuff, so then they also have the ability to go there and uh, <coughs> do the same thing you did, pay some money, and have them render, for example, your files. Um, and now I will give an example. Uh, oh, oh, what not to do? Yeah, that's first. Um, so you, you should not provide source code in a proprietary format. Uh, I have seen a documentation, for example, for an open source uh, project where the documentation was written in uh, Word. Um, well, nowadays we have OpenOffice, which you can maybe read it, but this is not really the preferred thing. Um, also, don't do anything that requires proprietary uh, programs to, to process. So you have maybe open <coughs> standards uh, file formats, but then the tools to actually make use of them are not free. Um, avoid using uh, commercial uh, fonts, for example, or image and sound libraries uh, for which you have to pay um, uh, to get it. Um, and also, what I've seen uh, sometimes is that people say, ah, uh, I made some music uh, with some software synthesizers and I have the Orcforbis file as a result. And uh, yeah, uh, no, you want to f uh, the original source files? No, because I say the Orcforbis files are the source. That's not the preferred form of modification, so that's a bit uh, strange. Um, so if you think about doing anything of the above, then maybe the GPL is not for you. But um, I will give you an example of uh, how to write music uh, that can be GPL'd because uh, we have the source code available. And uh, also, um, uh, I, I made this myself and uh, I'm more of a programmer, so uh, while you could perfectly do it with uh, graphical uh, user interfaces, uh, like a rose garden, uh, for example, uh, to, uh, to write your score and to uh, well, render it via software synthesizer, I decided, well, can you also write music completely with a text editor? So I will give three slides, uh, and in these three slides I will show you the complete source code of a piece of music, and I'll try to play it as well. Um, I use some uh, components because, uh, uh, well, I have some compilers. Uh, I'm going from ABC MIDI uh, of a music notation format to a MIDI file. Uh, I use C sound uh, to uh, as a software synthesizer to render the MIDI file. I use the Fluid Synth uh, library and uh, a general MIDI sound font uh, for samples. Uh, I process the resulting WAV file uh, to an old Forbes file. I use a make file script to automate everything. And uh, I have two resulting object codes from uh, this uh, source code. It's uh, the soundtrack itself, uh, but I also get a PDF with the sheet music. So what does it look like? Well, this is the score of a small song I made. Um, I don't have that much time, but uh, if you can look at it, you see uh, you have uh, like a bar notation, more or less. Uh, you have uh, letters from uh, A to through uh, uh, G for the, the note, and some numbers they didn't uh, are durations of uh, notes. Uh, so this is my uh, music notation, uh, and then this is my. Uh, C sound uh, software, uh, what is it? 
um, software synthesize the definition. Uh, it's also very short because I cheated a little bit. Normally you can build complex instruments from scratch from this, but actually I'm using the Fluid sound font engine that just loads some samples and uh, uses that to render the music. Um, and then I have a make file that uh, automates everything. And um, one of the products that the make file makes is uh, the PDF files uh, with the sheet music. And that's, for example, this. Uh, but now I'll try to give a demonstration. Uh, So I have a directory with my make file. Actually, I have two songs, um, but uh, let's just build it. Done. So uh, let's see if the sound works. Uh, Can follow it. one in the background that's a uh, much longer one but unfortunately the source code of that one was too big for the slides so so this uh, this music was made for a game uh, a, a space game where you fly around in a starfighter and have to shoot down the baddies um, so uh, this was a nice example uh, can you find more examples of uh, this online well I'm afraid I couldn't find that much, which is actually uh, licensed under the GPL. Uh, but um, there is a lot of multimedia around with source code. So the Bender project, for example, organizes uh, uh, once in every few years. They, uh, they create a movie and they uh, uh, make available all the sources for this movie so you can uh, recreate it yourself or you can make changes to it. Uh, Puffray is a ray tracer. Uh, they have a gallery where people can <coughs> submit their source code and you can see the rendered image. Uh, there's a website called shadertoys.com, I think, where uh, people program uh, OpenGL shaders uh, and have that produce uh, nice images and everything runs in the browser. Uh, just have a look at it. Uh, tracker modules. Um, so for music, that is very interesting because tracker modules are their own source code. Uh, it's basically uh, a combination of uh, the music uh, score and some samples and some fixed set of rules to play it. And I guess there are many more examples. And hopefully uh, this will inspire you to produce some GPL multimedia of your own. And then I look forward to seeing it. Yeah, so final words, it's uh, certainly possible. And uh, even if you're not uh, a person who uh, is used to multimedia the way artists make it, then uh, there are still ways to make them make music uh, and images uh, in a programmer style. Okay, so thank you. I think we have time for questions. Yeah. Yeah. Is this the first time you work in music? Uh, no. Uh, no, uh, I, so I've been uh, playing uh, keyboards and pianos since I was uh, five years old or so. Uh, I wrote uh, programs to produce music on, uh, in BASIC uh, when I was very young even. Um, so the question was, uh, is this the first time I wrote music? <laughs> uh, so, no. Um, but uh, this is actually 
uh, the first time I wrote it uh, as uh, source code this way. So. Anymore, or what? Yeah, so that's a good question. Uh, uh, what if my source code is uh, very big? Uh, I, uh, I have this. I can make use of this clause to uh, make it only available upon request. But then uh, all my hard disk uh, crashed, and I lost all my uh, sources. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this has happened before. Um, there are examples out there of people who did this. Uh, and then, yeah, you cannot uh, fulfill your promise anymore. Uh, but you are the copyright holder, so you are a bit special. Um, but anybody else who has your uh, end results and want to redistribute them under the same license, they now have a problem. <laughs> um, in that case, I would say, okay, uh, go to the original author. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, make the, the result available under a different license. I mean, then it's maybe uh, the CC uh, by license or uh, maybe uh, public domain, because then there's not much else that you can do. Yeah. So I had a question about the, um, is, is there a relationship between GPL and Creative Commons, or are they completely separate, they serve two different purposes? Yeah, that's a good question. Is, the, is there a relationship between a GPL and the Creative Commons? Uh, I think, uh, well, the GPL was very old already, um, but uh, the CC by SA license, the uh, shared alike uh, and attribution license is the most similar to the GPL and I think uh, it is inspired by uh, people who already know the GPL and wanted something similar in the Creative Commons. The only problem with it is that it doesn't make a distinction between uh, uh, source code and object code. So it's easy to uh, make some music and uh, publish the mp3 files under the CC by SA license but you cannot really modify it anymore maybe you can make cut something or change the pitch or mm. that's it but you cannot change some chords in the middle of the song for example yeah. it's more related to intellectual property as such no? the creative commons if the creative commons uh, licenses are more related to intellectual property um, no I well, I wouldn't say so. At least not more or less than the GPL is. Okay. So, may, uh, yeah? Um, so if, let's say, our, our artists and our content creators use some proprietary tools for maybe, like, tile sets they used, Photoshop, because they knew it and it was quicker, whatever, um, short of extracting those assets and to a different repository, like, hide them, is there any other way we can distribute them in, in, in some way or something else? Or yeah, so the question is uh, if you have uh, artists who use proprietary libraries uh, or software to, to produce the end results, is, the, is there a way to extract uh, everything you need uh, so as someone who receives the work that you can still do everything that the original artist did. That's hard to say uh, because um, there are many libraries uh, with samples, for example, or images out there with uh, clip art that say, okay, you, you can use this in your work if you pay for it, uh, but you're not allowed to redistribute the, the, the library itself uh, without any changes. Uh, and actually, maybe you, you really want to have the, the original library to be able to do the same thing that the original artist did. Um, but maybe there are situations where indeed you can use excerpts uh, from this library and make them available under the GPL. I don't know, this is a case-by-case -case thing, I would say. Is that, in that particular instance, it's, it's a tad hard. I mean, if, like, you will have your artists uh, who are used to some specific tools that they've been using for a while now, and if you want to make it open source, yes. uh, you 
want to distribute and you want to put it out there as an example? Yes, that's a good question. Uh, and, and I want to say something about that as well. So uh, what if you have artists, they are used to their proprietary tools. Uh, how can you convince them to switch to some free tools? Um, well, some of them might want to do it, uh, but uh, one thing is that uh, it's not always the case that if they use proprietary tools that you cannot distribute it as, uh, under the GPL because um, maybe there are free tools that can do exactly the same thing. And then it's not a problem. I mean, if some fun somebody does something in Photoshop, then uh, someone else can most likely edit everything in a very nice, uh, co convenient way in the GIMP, for example. Um, Maybe not everything, but uh, maybe it's good enough. Okay, I think I have to stop there. Thank you so much.